Here I've got a nice inequality type problem to show you guys. And I generally don't do a lot of these, and that's for really two reasons. First of all, I don't feel like I'm very good at them, but I'd like to practice and get better. And secondly, I think it's hard to make titles and thumbnails to make problems like this really clickable. So let's start this video with an open question. What do you think a good strategy for making titles and thumbnails for inequality type problems would be so that they're nice and clickable? Okay, so now that we've taken care of that, let's look at our problem. So we want to suppose that A, B, and C are non-negative numbers such that A plus B plus C is equal to 3. And then from there, we want to show that A over B squared plus 1 plus B over C squared plus 1 plus C over A squared plus 1 is bigger than or equal to 3 halves. So first off, I want to notice that there's a bunch of symmetry built into the left-hand side of this would-be inequality. So if we do a cyclic permutation, sending A to B, B to C, and then C back to A, we transform this first term into the second term, the second term into the third term, and then the third term back into the first term. That combined with the fact that our kind of given object is A plus B plus C, tells us that we will likely want to extract an A plus B plus C out of this left-hand side. In particular, because of that cyclic symmetry, we'd like to extract an A out of this, a B out of this, and a C out of this. What I mean is we should write these with A and no denominator plus a correction term, possibly with an inequality. Okay, so let's get to it. And instead of looking at this directly at the moment, we're gonna look at like a more universal version just so that we can maybe get a feel for what's going on. So let's first notice that we can take x over y squared plus one. So notice that could play the role of any of these. And then we can write it in this kind of complicated format. And that complicated format is x plus x times y squared minus x times y squared. So notice that we just added zero, which means we didn't do anything. But why did we add that version of zero? Well, that's because we can take an x out of these first two terms, and then we've got one plus y squared. And that's good news because after separating the fraction, that will cancel what's going on in the denominator, leaving us a free x. So let's see what we've got. So we're gonna have x minus xy squared over y squared plus one. Now we'd like to do some sort of inequality that makes this leftover term, term a little bit easier to work with. And I think technically what's going on here is we're using that arithmetic geometric mean inequality. But since there are only two objects that we're comparing here, I like to do this kind of all on its own. So let's maybe make the following observation, which is fairly elementary. And that is y squared minus 2y plus 1 easily factors as y minus 1 quantity squared. But if you square any real number, you get something that is bigger than or equal to 0. Okay. But now we can take this minus 2y and move it to the other side of the inequality. And that leaves us with y squared plus 1 is bigger than or equal to 2y. Okay, well that's cool, but notice we don't exactly have a y squared plus 1. We have a minus y, sorry, minus 1 over y squared plus 1 times an xy squared. So instead of an inequality involving y squared plus 1, we really need an inequality involving minus 1 over y squared plus 1. But it's easy to manipulate this guy to turn it into our goal inequality. And that is by first taking the reciprocal and then multiplying by minus 1. So let's notice that taking the reciprocal will change the order of the inequality. And then multiplying by minus 1 will change it back. So that'll leave us with minus 1 over y squared plus 1 is bigger than or equal to minus 1 over 2y. 
But now we can insert this new information into our original setup and we'll end with the following inequality. So putting that all together, we have x over y squared plus one is bigger than or equal to x minus xy squared over two y where we just replace that denominator y squared plus one with this two y by our previous discussion. But notice that this simplifies pretty easily to x minus xy over two. And now that can symmetrically be applied to all of the parts of this thing over here. So for instance, we have a over b squared plus one is bigger than or equal to a minus a b over two. And then likewise, b over c squared plus one is bigger than or equal to b minus bc over two. And then obviously there's gonna be one more for this last term. Okay, so let's maybe get rid of this and then we'll apply what we've just discovered to the left-hand side of our inequality over here. And hopefully that'll move us towards showing that this is in fact bigger than or equal to three over two. So on the last board, we showed that for all non-negative x and y, this x over y squared plus one is bigger than or equal to x plus xy over two. Now we can apply that to these three objects that make up the left-hand side of our would-be inequality, and that gives us an inequality involving these three new objects. Now we want to start trying to put those together into something which is obviously bigger than 3 over 2. So let's see. We can add this a, b, and c together and see that we get a plus b plus c, but that's our given, which is the number 3. And then we're left with minus one half, and then this cyclic sum of terms that are quadratic in A, B, and C. So we've got A, B plus B, C plus A, C left over. And now we want to get a handle on this. And that's going to involve a trick pretty similar to what we used when proving this inequality. And so let's start with a plus b plus c quantity squared. So on the one hand, that's equal to 3 squared, which is 9. But then on the other hand, that's equal to a squared plus b squared plus c squared plus 2 ab plus 2bc plus 2ac. So that's just from multiplying this out. It's like a trinomial coefficients, if you will. And now I'm gonna start moving some things around so that we have our kind of what's left over, which is this minus half AB plus BC plus AC thing. So notice this tells us that minus one half AB plus BC plus AC equals one quarter, and then we have a squared plus b squared plus c squared minus nine. So we just rearrange this equation to solve for what's ending up right here. Okay, and now we can apply kind of a well-known named inequality. So let me know in the comments if you know the name for this inequality. And that is we can replace that thing right there with a plus b plus c, again, if we put the appropriate direction of inequality. So this is bigger than or equal to one quarter a plus b plus c minus nine. But our given is that a plus b plus c equals three. So that means we know a plus b plus c minus nine is negative six. So this is equal to negative six over four, which is equal to minus three over two. So that means we can make this replacement and the inequality is going in the correct order. So notice that this is bigger than or equal to three minus three halves, which is equal to three halves. And that's exactly where we wanted to end up. And that's a good place to stop.